Okay, so we've already installed our video card. We put the block on, as you saw earlier, and then we hooked up our outgoing tube to the bottom, and I gave myself plenty of room so that I can maneuver this around the power supply because here's where the power supply is going to sit. Now I've got to take my, eight, my, my uh, intake and take it out of the back of the case, and here's the outtake that's got to go out the back of the case to the, to the pumping unit, which is here. Here's our pumping unit. So this pumping unit, and I'm actually going to change this coolant out of there and make it blue, will be sending and receiving. Then we have the cooling unit, which is the radiator unit here. The radiator unit here will need to be connected as well. So we've still got some little stuff to do. But this is all going to be external on the case. Most of the time this is internal on the case. But because our case is so small, we're going to have to adjust it and make it external. So it's just going to take a little bit of extra wiring and stuff like that. That's what we've got these extra Molex extensions here for. So we went ahead and put in the back cover here. We ran the line through it and put the extension Molex that we talked about earlier that we had bought and then the extension for the fan lines because that's going to go to our power, our cooling unit. Here's the outtake from the VGA and here's the input to the CPU water block. We've got OS on red, the operating system obviously, then the uh, CD burner on the orange. That's just for color coding for my personal reference if I ever have to open the case. Our power extension cable for the board and then our video card power extension cables in the back as well. We've already put in the power pin front plates and we've wired the USBs in through the uh, pins on the, on the board. All right, so this is our 650-watt single-rail power supply modular setup. The only thing that's not modular on here is the power cable, and that's very little cable to have to worry about for cable management inside. But as you can see, we get to pick which uh, cable connectors we want to add for our power, which makes it extremely convenient. Well worth the money on this. Okay. All right, so I went ahead and dumped out all the coolant out of the system because I didn't want the yellow. I want blue. Now, with this dye, you need to add your water and then simply add the dye and shake it to get the desired color that you want. Um, this coolant has antifreeze in it. I do not live in a cool uh, environment. I don't live in a cold area, so I don't have to worry about my system freezing completely. So I didn't um, worry about adding more antifreeze to the system. I'm not concerned about it. If you live in a, in a cold environment and you're worried that it's going to get below zero, then go ahead and add coolant or antifreeze to your coolant. Antifreeze will reduce the level of cooling that the coolant can actually do, though. So remember, if you put in full antifreeze into your system, which you can do, um, it will make your, cool, your, your system run a little warmer than it normally would. It will make it run hot, but it won't work as well as water does. So I would suggest a 50-50 mixture if you're going to do a coolant antifreeze mix. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, put some water in here and once again we're using distilled natural water. The reason I'm using this bottle is because this is what they gave me in the cooling with the cooling kit and it's got a special little lid that's got a little straw in it to put into the into the receiving unit. So I added my water, now I'm going to add my dyes. Now it's going to take probably three bottles of this to fill the entire system up. Now I'm going to go ahead and shake my dye up just a little bit. And with it shaken, oopsie, we've got a little leak even. Be careful with this stuff, man. This stuff is extremely potent and it will stain your clothes. It will destroy anything it gets on. So be very, very careful with this stuff. And we're just going to go ahead and add our color to our water. Okay, I just added five drops. Okay, now let's shake up our water and see how that looks. And we have blue dye. Look how easy it is. And like I said, I got the gallon, I got the gallon of water for a dollar. The dye for eight. 
Now if I wanted it more, which I do want it a little more, I'm going to add another two drops to it. Now we're going to go ahead and add this to the system. We're going to take off one of these intakes so that we can get air in there while we are adding our water. Now the reason I said like I use this bottle was because they gave me this nice little topper. I'm going to keep this bottle forever and use it anytime I need to fill the system. Now you're going to have to add liquids to the system from time to time. It's just going to happen. All right. So we went ahead and put the system together. Since we have such a small case, we had to put everything outside. Now we tested the system. The system turned on fine. So everything's working fine. And now we're going to add coolant to our system to get our coolant up. As you can see, our tube is empty. This tube's got some coolant in it. But basically, the system's empty, so we're adding coolant to it now. I went ahead and took off the, the knob. Here's our blue coolant again. So we're going to go ahead and get the coolant in position and be ready to go. And we're going to turn on the, co the computer now. That beeping's telling us that the, it's out of coolant and that we need to add more. Now we're going to let it run for 20 minutes and we're going to look for leaks and anything like that that could be in here that could cause problems. All right, so after some minor configuration and everything, we're ready to go. Um, the system's up and operating. And um, as you can see, there's uh, three, uh, three hard drives, two terabytes. That's six terabytes total. We've got our water coolant lines here, our power supply in. We need to do some basic cable management, but that comes and goes before we button it up. There's the bottom of the video card. And so here really comes the, the last line to see if everything we paid for is going to pay for itself, the speed and performance. So at this point in time, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and restart the system, and we're going to see how long it takes to power on. Uh, components apply changes. So, okay, so we're going to restart the computer now and let's see how long it takes to change. Now it's going to be making changes, so it's going to boot a little bit slower, but I still think you're going to be amazed at how fast it boots. So that's the full shutdown time. That's that SSD at work right there, man. It's a screaming animal. It's a manimal. <laughs> going to start Windows, and that's all we're going to see. We're not going to see the blue welcome screen for more than half a second. Oh. Desktop. And that's a full shutdown and power on cycle right there. And it lasts all about 7 to 10 seconds. So it's an extremely fast machine. It'll do everything you need to do. It was a tough build. I'm glad it's done. Some time for some cable management. We're going to put the panels back on. It's been quite a, quite a few hours now, so we've got no leakage. We're ready to sew it up and call it the end of a build. Uh, if you guys have any questions or concerns, shoot me out a an email or shoot me out a comment here, and I'll check them from time to time. Thanks for watching.